to look at a legal problem called diameter of binary trees so i haven't do any easy legal problems for a while now so i'm gonna do it now um, but basically depends really depends on your experience um, this question in my opinion is pretty easy but it might not be easy for um for other people but i think that in this video i really want to talk about what i learned from this this question and you know how you can be able to solve any of those legal problems using this similar um, process, right? So basically the question is that we're given the root of the binary tree. Uh, we want to return the length of the diameter of the tree, right? So in this case, is a tree problem. We want to figure out the diameter of the tree and diameter basically means the length, the longest path between any nodes in the tree, right? And this does not mean that we have to go past the root. So I can give you a perfect example. For example, if I have a node Right, and in this case, this is the root, and you can see this also have a bigger subtree here, right? So you can see the longest parameter, or sorry, the diameter in this case is here, right? So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, and then, and in this case, if you don't have to go through the root, in this case, if I have a node here, one, two, three, four, right? That give you a total. Uh, the diameter of this path is four. The diameter of this path in this case is six, right? Or sorry, in this case, five, right? So in this case, um, we just return five. So we don't have to go past the root. Um, and then you can also see the length of a path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. Okay, so basically you can see this line right here, that's an edge, okay? So you can see we have an example here, right? So we have this uh, binary tree. And you can see that uh, we're returning three because in this case, you can see the diameter of this binary tree is basically one, two, and three, right? So in this case, we have uh, a diameter of three, right? It doesn't matter if you go from four to one, three, or five to one, three, we're just, brought, we're just interested in returning the diameter of the binary tree. Okay, so in this case, uh, we want to return that, right? And you can also see we also have another example like one, two. So if I have just one and two, then in this case, the only edge that we have is this, right? So in this case, uh, you can see it's pretty straightforward that we're just returning this, this one edge. Um, and then you can see the constraints is that we are guaranteed to have, you know, at least one node in our binary search or binary tree, right? And then the value in here pretty much doesn't really matter because we don't really use the value at all, right? We're basically interested in, you know, like the actual diameter, right? The, the diameter of the tree. So in this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? Well, when you deal with problem like this, I think it doesn't matter if it's tree or, you know, recurrent tree or, you know, uh, dynamic programming or anything. I think it's very important to, you know, think about how we can be able to break the problem down, or maybe like just work, start to work with the base case, right? Um, so just like I mentioned before a couple of videos ago, you know, if you want to build a dynamic table, dynamic, dynamic programming table, right? DP table, you know, you have to start with, you know, the base case. So in this case, what's the base case here? So if I have just one node, right? Because like I said, again, the constraints, we're guaranteed to have at least one node in our tree, right? So if I only have one node, uh, what's the diameter? Well, in this case, it's going to be zero because there's no edge, right? So in this case, we return zero. Uh, but what if we have like this, right? It doesn't really matter what note, what the value is. So I'm just going to put like a, uh, in this case, empty, right? So basically nothing, right? So if I have this tree right here, what's the, um, you know, what's the diameter of this one? Okay, so we know that the height of this sub, this tree is two, or in this case, uh, in this case, sorry, uh, yeah, in this case, the height of the, the, the subtree, or the, in this case, the tree is basically two, and then there's, a, and the, the edge between here and here is just, just one, right? So you can see, uh, if I want to know the diameter, I basically, I need to know the height of the left subtree plus the diameter of the right subtree, right? Or in this case, sorry, the height of the, le uh, the, the right subtree. In this case, the left subtree has a height of, in this case, just one, and the right subtree has a height of one, so one plus one is basically two, right? So if I go here, it's basically two. So I know that the diameter for this subtree is basically two, okay? Okay, so now let's work up a, a bigger example like this. So if I wanna know the diameter of this, or this subtree, um, I know the, the, the height or the diameter of the left, uh, 
yeah, sorry, in this case, the height of the, the left subtree, right, is basically just two, right? We have one, we have two, right? And then the height of the right subtree is basically just one. Okay, so if I don't want to know the diameter of this subtree or this tree, then it's basically the height of the left subtree plus the height of the right subtree, right? Or in this case, the max height, right? Because in this case, I could have also have like this, right? I can also have like another node, right? In this case, I can also have another node. And in this case, for this subtree, the height of this subtree, right? The max height of the subtree, in this case, sorry, just, just the height of the sub, this subtree is basically one, two, three, right? So basically it's three. So we basically return back the height of this subtree is basically three, right? We want to know the max height, right? In this case, the, the longest uh, the longest branch, right? So in this case, we return the, the number of the edges, right? In this case, basically is two. And we know that the, the right subtree has the height, or in this case, one edge, right? So to know the diameter basically is two plus one, which is basically three, right? Okay. But the thing is, like I said earlier before, like, you know, in this case, we don't really have to go past the root. There could be a situation where we've already found a, uh, you know, the longer, longest diameter, right? Or the biggest diameter in the subtree. So in this case, what we had to do is that we have to go from bottom to up, right? We, we start from the bottom, we calculated the, the diameter for the current subtree, and then we can be able to use a, you know, in this case, a variable to keep track of the longest or the maximum diameter uh, that we have in our binary tree, right? So we do a DFS, and then in this case, you can see uh, we're starting from the bottom. So the base case is that if the left, if, if this current node is basically a leaf node, we're basically just going to return one, right? If you look at the code, uh, if node left and node right is null, right? If this is a leaf node. Uh, we're basically just going to return one as the height, right, of this current node, right? And then you can see the left is zero, the right is zero. So basically, there's no edges, right? There's no, the diameter is basically zero. So we back, we, we return back to the root now. So now we have no two, right? So no two, we know the left is, uh, in this case, is one. And we also know the right is has a height, or in this case, only one edge. So left plus right is two. So we know that the diameter of the current subtree is basically two. Okay, so in this case, what we need to do is that we need to return the height, or in this case, yeah, the height of this current subtree, right? So we know the left or the right. So left and the right, they both have one. So basically it's just one plus one is two, right? So we return back to the root. We know that the left subtree has two edges, right? One and two, right? And then in this case, the right subtree, if you're following, so node.right is not null, so we go down to this path. So we know that node.right, or in this case, node three has a leaf node, right? Because node.left and node.right is not is basically null. So in this case, we're returning one back to the root because in this case, this node has a one edge, right? Which is this one right here. So we return back to the root, right? I'm just gonna draw it now. Basically, we are having one, we have two, right? So in this case, this is two because we have two edges, one and two, and this is have one edge because this here is one. So in this case, to calculate the diameter of this subtree, right, is basically two plus one, right? So in this case, it's basically three, right? We go, we find out the height or the, the height of the left subtree plus the height of the right subtree will give us the, the diameter of this current subtree, right? And in this case, we're basically just returning the height of the uh, current uh, current subtree, right? But what we're really interested is the, the height or the max uh, diameter, right? Which is what we're returning at the end. So that's basically how we solve the problem is we're basically just gonna return um, the the max, right? Which is basically the maximum diameter that we, uh, that we found throughout the binary tree. So you can see if we, uh, Submit the code, you can see we have our success. And you can see the time complexity for this one is big of n, n is the number of nodes that we have in our tree. 